Hi everyone, welcome to the last what I'm teaching this week and probably the one that's gonna be the most of a mess, but that's okay. In this video, we're gonna talk about first and second grade end of the year lessons. And the reason I say it's gonna be a mess is because I don't think I did the same thing for my first and second graders any week that we had this rotation. We had like a field trip we were preparing for and then after that we were, it was just like a hot mess central between testing and field trip and like just it was crazy town. So I'm gonna give you like my best suggestion at what we kind of sort of did in this last week of school. Um and yeah they're very similar though so I'm gonna kind of talk about both. Although I kind of feel like second grade was closer to third grade. Oh well, whatever. Here we go. On Monday, first grade is doing the song Highway Number One, which is a really cute dancing um, song that you can find on Apple Music or on YouTube. And it goes, I traveled around Australia on highway number one. I travel around Australia just to have some fun. And then when you get to different cities, so it'll be like, and when I get to Adelaide, I stopped and saw someone and she said, and then they'll say something. And so we um, walk to the beat in our spot and then we'll do whatever they say. So like one time it says, um, side together wiggle so we'll do like side together and then wiggle um one is like heel and toe and stomp so we do heel toe stomp um one is walk walk and run 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 that's definitely their favorite um and so they love that song it's super cute and super fun after that with my first graders we are going over some of the rhythms that we played so i found a video on youtube that actually had um, for all that like walk, walk, and run, 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 it had the rhythms underneath. And so we looked at the rhythms that were on there. We remember what Ta and Titi looked like. And then we played a couple of rhythms up on the screen, culminating in B, B, Bumble, B. And we would go over B, B, Bumble, B. After that, if we had time, then we played our B, B, Bumble, B game, which I guess I should show you. It goes B, B, Bumble, B. Stung a man upon his knee. Stung a pig upon his snout. I declare that you are out. So what we did is I ordered a little bumblebee finger puppet off of Amazon. I put him on a like glockenspiel mallet and the kids tap the other kids in the circle to the beat as we say the song. And then whoever gets, I declare that you are out. That person is out. And so what I have them do is that person grabs the glockenspiel mallet with the b on it they're the new person to go and then i have um like three drums set up and so the kid will go to a who would just was the b goes to a drum and they'll play the beach or the rhythm depending on the day and how i'm feeling um along with us as we go and then they'll scooch over to the next drum the next time the next drum the next time and i like having that so it's like three and then you go back to your seat and that's just a really fun and easy way to do that on Tuesday, the kids come in and we are doing highway number one a second time, but this time I let them move around the room, which just makes everything even more exciting. Um, I also have done this in the past where we will listen to it and then we'll sing it and then I'll have the kids pick what we're gonna do instead of the kids on the video picking what we're gonna do. After that, again, we look at a couple of different rhythms and after we look at a couple of different rhythms, then I have the kids write some rhythms so we get whiteboards we get markers and the first thing i do with these first graders because they have not actually written rhythms before is we'll be like okay so what is it oh, i'll say how many sounds does ta have they'll say one I'm like okay so how many dots is ta gonna have they say one i'm like great and so i'll draw a dot and then a line I'm like this is how we draw ta okay how many sounds does tt have i'll say two i'm like okay how many dots is it gonna have two okay and then i'll do dot dot line 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 across the top and i make a big deal about that so that they can see how to draw it and then we get whiteboards we get markers and i'll say a rhythm and the kids write it and they usually pick this up pretty quickly and i want to make sure that we get some practice because we're actually taking our assessment tomorrow we did not practice as much as i wanted to because like i mentioned the past like Two months really have just been like crazy town with like testing, field trip, this happening, that happening, practice testing. Like there's just so much, so much testing. And the first graders weren't testing, but I didn't see the first graders when we were testing. So that's why I like just got everything so mixed up. Anyway, that takes up the whole rest of the time. Really, really true. On Wednesday, the kids come in and we are doing a go noodle to get their wiggles out. I love the one that is the dance along with um, the, uh, oh 
Oh my gosh, that's the song goes. I got that sunshine in my pocket, got that good song in my feet. Can't stop the feeling. That's how. That's what it's called. Um, and so it's really, really cute. And oh my gosh, it's so much fun to watch them do it because it's actually kind of complicated. And then after that, we're doing a spring rhythm play along from Music with Miss Gibbs, who has a whole bunch of rhythm like rhythm play alongs on her YouTube channel. Highly recommend. And this one's really fun because they like play a rhythm a couple times, and then I tell them if they do a good job, it makes the flowers grow. And so they get really excited to pick what flowers are gonna grow. They'll be like, because it'll say like, what color do you think's gonna be next? And like blue, blue, blue. And then if they get it right, they'll be like, yeah. And it's just hilarious so we do it once just clapping and then we do it a second time with rhythm sticks because you know rhythm sticks make everything different and then after that we're taking our rhythm assessment Woo! so i'm like great we just practiced a whole bunch of rhythms now let's see if we can write some rhythms we're gonna get a paper it's gonna have a lot of questions but i'm gonna read them all to you i always preface that so they don't like totally freak out when they see it and I tell them the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna say a rhythm and you're gonna write it just like yesterday. So it's very, very easy. The first thing you do is put your name on your paper, they get their papers, and we are using the rhythm assessments that are in my TBT shop. So I will link those down below. I have ones for most of the rhythms that you need and more of the complicated ones should be coming soon, but um, they're doing just the quarter and eighth note one. And so there's, um, well, okay. The pack has like a bajillion. <sighs> things you can use them for sub plans you can use them for worksheets you can use them for assessments it has um, shorter ones you can use this exit tickets like there's everything you could possibly need but the ones we're using are the like culminating ones and so there's 10 or actually i think they only have eight questions on theirs now that i'm thinking about it but it has two questions that are like right the rhythm that i say and then it says like circle ta circle tt and then it has them circle the rhythms that match the words and then they write their own rhythm. And so it's just like really, really quick. The kids did really, really well on it and they just do it quickly. And I do these assessments at the end of the year, mostly for me, like, yes, it does go in the grade book as a grade, but mostly so that I can see what we need to do next year. Like, do we need to start working on this a lot more? Do we need to spend a lot more time on it? Or can we move on? Can we make things harder? Like, what is the deal? How did I do as a teacher? Like, where are are we and especially like some classes I saw did a lot better than others and usually it was because I saw those classes a lot more which is not their fault and not my fault but it is the reality of what it is and that's just kind of where we are on Friday the kids come in and we're doing a another go noodle and honestly I think I picked a different one every single time after that, we were just basically having fun. So we did a couple of different things. We did BB Bubble Bee, and we did the Grizzly Bear song and game, which goes, Grizzly Bear, oh, Grizzly Bear is sleeping in a cave. Grizzly Bear, oh, Grizzly Bear is sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he'll get very mad. And so I have one kid lay in the middle and the others walk in a circle around him on our hike. And at the end, I got to freeze. And if you move, then the bear sees you and he will chomp you and you are out and you go sit out. And usually I let, I do like three rounds with one bear and then I'll pick a different bear and everyone comes back in. Um, I know a lot of you were like, what do you do with the kids who are out? Usually the answer is just, they can be out and they will not die, I promise. Um, so some did BB Bumblebee, some did the Grizzly Bear song. And then we also, a lot of us did freeze dance because freeze dance is so much fun, especially the first grade, two Encanto songs. Yeah, 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 that's what we did. Um, and so it just kind of depended on like how much time, whether we did all three of those things or just two of those things or like kind of what the deal was. But that's always my goal for the end of the year for the very last day is just like, let's have lots of fun. Now let's talk about second grade. They have very similar activities. So second grade wise is starting Monday. They're also doing highway number one. After they do highway number one, then we are going over our song. Then we talk about some of the animals that live in Australia. We went over the kookaburra song with one of the classes, but not the other classes. So there's that. We talk about some of the animals that live in Australia. We talk about how Australia is an island, so it has a lot of water, including different animals that live in the ocean. We talk about like, what are some animals that live in the ocean? All of this leading up to Ickle, aqua, blue, bottle, fishes in the sea. If you want a partner, just choose me. And this song is really fun. And so then I'll have them um, pretend to be different animals while we sing. So we'll be like jellyfish and then we'll be sharks and different things like that. Then up on the screen, I throw up um, a solfege game called Save, save the Fish, where they have to save the fresh 
fish from all the different predators that come by picking the correct soul fish, which is just really fun. And they just show me one or two, which one it is. We usually just do like three of them so that we can like, you know, keep going. Um, and then after that, I have them help me put some notes on the staff. And so I'll have a couple of different patterns that they help me with and then I'm like great now that we've written some notes on the staff let's see if you can write some notes on the staff we're gonna have a scavenger hunt it's really called a ride the room but we're gonna have a scavenger hunt where you have to go around and find the different soul fish patterns and put them on the staff so this is a write the room activity i have five cards this is my tbt shop i'll link it down below it's we did the spring theme one, but there's a summer one coming soon. Um, and so um, we, I have the kids, I like spread the cards around the room and I use, there's a couple of different, okay, there's a couple different versions. There's notes on the staff and you can have them copy the notes on the staff or have them write like, oh, that's so me, law. Um, and then there's also like, you can use ones that say like S for so, M for me, L for law. And then you can have them write the notes on the staff. And that's the one we're using to like practice writing notes on the staff. And so I just use five of them. They get a recording sheet and they match the number to the number on their paper. And they have like a little picture too. So it's like the kite one with the kite one. Um, so that is Monday. On Tuesday, the kids come in. We're doing highway number one a second time. After that, I will go through and I just have some patterns up on the board and I'll be like, hey, can anyone sing this pattern? Can anyone sing this pattern? Um, with solfege again. Can anyone sing this pattern? And then I have one. <laughs> I did this last week with third grade too, so you might have seen it already. But I have one where all the dots are stacked on top of each other because they do that. I always have at least one that has a hard time with the spacing out the notes on the staff and they put them like all up and down. And I'm like, great, who can sing this one for me? And they kind of look at me for a second and then someone will be like, oh, it says so-so Mimi. I'm like, okay, does anyone think something different? They're like, oh, it's Mimi so-so. And someone else would be like, no, 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 it's so me, so me. No, 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 it's me, so me, so. And I let them go on for a while. And then after a while, I'll be like, you know what? All of you are kind of right because Miss Davis wrote it wrong. And they're like, oh. I'm like, yeah, Miss Davis wrote it wrong. What's wrong with it? And they'll be like, they're on top of each other. I'm like, yes, you cannot put the notes on top of each other because we don't know which one of you is right because we can't tell which note comes first. So we gotta make sure we scooch them over so we can see, you know, which one comes first and which one comes second and stuff like that. Um, I find that having the write the room activity the day before and then having that where they are like very specifically like seeing that problem on the screen really helps them to do really well for our solfege assessment, which they are taking next. So after that, we're taking our solfege assessment. On this one, it has three different things. These will be on TPT sometime in the near future. Sometime, but not yet. Um, and so the first one, the first couple questions are they have to put, the notes are on the staff, they have to say which what letters they are, which solfege they are. And then it will say um, the letters and they have to put the notes on the staff and then they make up their own patterns, which is their own favorite, which is why I like to always include it. Um, and they also put the notes underneath so I can tell them, um, so I know that you know what you're talking about. Then if they finish that early, then they get to do a color by note. We're using the spring color by note from my TBT shop, which I will also link down below. Um, it was not quite spring anymore, but it's okay. Um, I'll have some new ones out for you sometime in the near future. Um, I'm not promising anything right this moment. Then on Wednesday, the kids come in and they're doing a, the same go noodle. So they're doing the, we can't stop the feeling. And then they're doing a rhythm play along as well with hands, then with sticks. And then they're doing their rhythm assessment as well. So the exact same thing. Um, again, I don't think I had any Thursdays or if I did, they were really wonky, so I'm not worried about it. And then Friday rolls around, and Friday we're doing like half what the first graders did and half what the third graders did, which is why I combine these. So Friday, my last day with my little second graders, um, we are starting out the day with a um, body percussion move along to Hawaiian roller coaster ride. And so it just shows you like clapping and you clap and like hands like this and you snap um, and we go along with that. I'll link it down below. It is a little off in the timing, so do be aware of that, but 
we just kind of took what it said on the screen and did our own little thing um and so that was really fun and then after that we played limbo so now we're gonna go to a different island because Lim limbo fun fact is from trinidad i looked it up because i was not sure um so we're going to trinidad to play limbo and for limbo i just have myself and one of the kids hold the limbo stick it's a boom whacker and then the other kids get in a circle and they go around and then whenever we get back to the first kid we bring it down a little bit and it is so much fun it's so simple sometimes it's like the simplest things that are so much fun but they love it it is just hilarious super fun super cute then after that we are playing the grizzly bear game and then after that, if we have time, we play an extra game. So some of them got to play freeze dance. Some of them got to play the Kookaburra Four Corners that I talked about in my third grade lessons last week. Um, some of them played something else. Now I don't even remember what it was. And some of them didn't have time and they just played the two games and they were still happy and it was fine. So all of that to say, basically, that's my strategy for the end of the year. It's just like let's have fun let's get things done we did you know practice we did assess let's have fun and i'll see you next year and with that this is the final what i'm teaching this week for the 2021 2022 school year which is super exciting to like having got through every single one um this is the second year i've gotten through all of my lessons the year before that i started and then i did not finish um which i'm gonna blame on the pandemic but i think it started before that anyway um so two full years of lessons out there ready for you and i would love to know if you've been watching them if you like them if i should do them again next year because i will not have another one until august if you want them again let me know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see next year so I know whether I should make them or not anyway if you have been around I know a lot of you watch like every single one of these videos so I really appreciate you like I know I don't say it often but I appreciate so much every view every like every comment every everything thank you so much for being here hopefully I you know give you some help because that's really the whole point of me being here is to help you out and help make your life a little bit easier so Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.